Thank you very much, Edmund. I'm going to use a microphone. It's just my voice is a bit, uh, a bit rough today. Quite relevant to the first talk, actually. This one was. Uh, so it's a great honour to be invited by the TIMP committee today to deliver the keynote lecture. Uh, in today's presentation, I'm going to examine one of the central case studies of my recent piano and multimedia work. But I hope that the case raises some wider questions and ideas that have you know, wide relevance to the field of te technology and musical performance. Uh, the case <clears throat> in question is wikipiano.net for piano and internet, a work I commissioned and premiered in April 2018. After discussing its collaborative creation, I'll then explore the subsequent collaborative development of an interpretive approach to the early, early versions and the more flexible framework to this ever-changing work that I incrementally developed that has survived you heard, like 25 performances. Alexander Schubert is one of Germany's leading composers and a particularly influential figure across Europe with work responding to and utilizing digital media and internet culture. So you can see him there. <laughs> His work is particularly impressive in its combined mastery of control and control of several art forms in sync. For example, Codec Era, performed here by members of Ensemble Intercontemporain, features an intricate choreography of lighting, electronic sound, performer playing, and movement. <coughs> especially because musicians are all playing this basically 40 minute work by memory. It's all very intricately done. Um, and we can also see his masterful subversion of stage and screen conventions in this clip from Starmy Kitten, taking the premise of a lecture about music, which then turns into a wild theatrical work with the PowerPoint breaking down to the point that it becomes some kind of horror scenario with the presenter as this sort of horror victim, which is hopefully not what will happen today. For the next chapter, let's take a step back and try to approach the topic from a less personal perspective. Do you know my parents? Yes. actually quite early in the piece, it gets way more crazy. Um, <clears throat> so Schubert's output can be seen as central to the development since 2010 of a new type of interdisciplinary music, uh, identified by Marco Cicilliani 
as music in the executive <coughs> field, and Jennifer Walsh as the new discipline. This new interdisciplinary music combines music with performance art, theatre, film, video art, and other forms of performance. Drawing from earlier data and Fluxus approaches, and composers such as Richard Cargill and Karlheinz Stockhausen, new interdisciplinary music is also influenced by post-internet culture, contemporary video art, improvisational performance theatre, stand-up comedy, and cyborg aesthetics. And there's um, the sort of key papers in that, including the ones uh, I just mentioned by Walsh and Ciciliani, as well as these kind of influential art and theatre writers like Seth Kim Cohen and Hanley's Han Thies Lehman. In many ways, the work I'm going to discuss today encompasses many of these different disciplines and aesthetic elements, but the method of creating the work makes this a unique outlier or even a subversive parody of this new field. So I commissioned Schubert to write a new work in late 2015, and he suggested an internet-based score. The score would exist on a website <coughs> that members of the public could add to or edit, just like a Wikipedia article. He was particularly inspired by this collaborative online art project uh, on Reddit, where each user could change just one pixel at a time. Uh, I'll start playing it so you can see how it goes. Uh, the work would be constantly changing with each performance featuring the on version online at that time of performance. And as you can see, even though each user can just change one pixel, you get these little uh, cats forming to make their own flags. You get people who also have more destructive tendencies, creating this sort of these voids of particular colors. And I think that's a little bit of um, Karl Marx's Das Kapital being formed there. <laughs> In the middle in red, uh, as you get to the end, towards the end, you get uh, the Mona Lisa forming in there. You get yeah. these sort of battles between the French and German flag. <laughs> <laughs> the Germans trying to extend theirs quite across. So you get these very <clears throat> interesting uh, creative outputs from this kind of crowdsource creativity. Um, at this stage, Schubert thought of the work as an extension of Cage's experiments with chance. As a hyper-controlling composer, as you just saw, the distribution of authorship was a challenging concept to him, for him to take on. <clears throat> but as the work needed completion, this idea of the composer being removed from the work became much more complex from re in reality. I flew to Hamburg in February 2018 to discuss the score in its current state in the lead up to the premiere in April of that year. The work at that stage closely resembled the scores that now exist. Uh, featuring text boxes, areas of notation, sounds that could be added, embedded YouTube links, and series of actions. As we discussed the sections, it seemed to me that the better interactions involved multiple media, as this would allow for creative juxtaposition between different elements created by different people. For example, a video with text or notation with a video, rather than these things individually. <clears throat> Despite requiring a quite a bit of further programming, Schubert is very amenable to this idea, and together we worked out how many of each combination there should be. So we talk a little bit about this, uh, how we should combine these, this little uh, meeting. Uh, we also discussed how Schubert would provide for me a palette of sounds on a keyboard sampler that I could use to accompany me while reading text or doing actions without always playing the piano. He makes reference to a uh, horse spiel or radio play and the use of a set of sounds to accompany the voices. Um, yeah, which you, which you would get in this kind of ready play. So it's an anachronistic reference to another medium, but one that suited the flexibility of the work well. So once we had this idea of this keyboard sampler, this sort of set of, uh, set of sound effects, then we uh, start talking about the actual sounds that we'd use. So I suggested a lot of the sounds um, that we'd eventually end up using a lot of um, could see uh, cliched internet sounds, <coughs> like 90s modem sounds, which all seemed kind of appropriate given this is an internet-based work. Um, so clearly Schubert's openness to compositional input wasn't limited to the website, as he made quite major changes to the structure of the piece, as well as for the tools for performance based on this meeting, meaning that my authorial contribution to the work had already begun at this stage. The score was announced online via social media platforms in the first two weeks of April. 
that year. The response was overwhelming, with the entire score changing on an almost daily basis. Um, modules are divided into the following categories. So, I mean, you can all go and visit the, the website and check these out, but I'll like, do a little walkthrough. So these are all the main sections. As you can see, there's bits with these individual elements and then lots of bits with the combination of these. And then this option to move uh, modules up and down or switch them on and off, which allows you to change the entire structure of the work. So the structure is not, not fixed at all, although the, the types of uh, modules that you have on there and the number of them is, is fixed. So this is the opening the website. It's got the fixed text. Most of it is fixed. And this is what I'll be reading out tonight when I perform the work. And then after this, everything is variable. So you have bits of notation that can be buried. You have uh, sound files that can be embedded. You have text, as you can see. You have YouTube videos. You have a drop down menus with actions. <clears throat> and you can choose what's in those drop down menus. You have series of images, which I need to interpret. You have a, a kind of a Microsoft Paint kind of panel, which people can draw on. And then you have these combinations like uh, images with text. And then you have uh, statistics, as you can see there, which again I'll, is a kind of set bit of the work, which I'll read out. And then the, the feedback <laughs> comments. So unlike most cases, this is where you definitely do need to read the comments at the bottom of the website, <laughs> which come in many forms, which well, I'll get to in a minute. So this is the <clears throat> what the website looks like overall. So anyone can edit the site simply by adding any username. Each logged in user can make 10 edits before having to wait for the counter to go back up. This makes it harder work for a single user to make major edits to the score in one go, although some patient users have done so, as you'll see. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> very patient users. Uh, the website score is also a performance platform, as you can see, with archived editions of the website openable as a performance version and an audience version in different windows. So as you can see, what I see in the performance version and what you see is, is the audience is slightly different. Sometimes you see the text that I'm reading out, sometimes you see a blank screen, so that there's not a one-to-one -one, uh, one -one mapping. And this archive version, uh, you can see it at the top, it goes uh, every single minute from the time that the website was launched, it's been archived. So the use of this archive version, rather than the, the live site, allowed for some control over the content, even though we tried to take the version as close to the performance as possible. So I was keen to have some time to prepare a performance, even if that was 24 hours. And I was also keen to have some control over objectionable con content such as hate speech and pornography, mm. and the worst of all outcomes, Nazi porn, <laughs> which we didn't talk about, <laughs> where otherwise I could inadvertently commit a crime on stage. <laughs> He's German, so he found that quite funny. Uh, when we met at Podium, uh, Podium Festival in Estlingen, we collaboratively prepared the first interpretation of the work. <laughs> this became a template for future interpretations. My setup included a keyboard with the samples, which I could also use for organ sounds, a microphone for speaking, the piano and the laptop with the website open. So, which you can basically all see there. Although now I usually put the keyboard on top of the piano. Although the score contained a wide range of content, Schubert was keen that the performance would be coherent. So we spent 11 hours over two days honing this first interpretation. A lot of time of that time was taken over my characterization of the text sections, something that I, without an actor's training, was not very experienced in, and in making the version fluent, effectively meaning I had to memorize a sequence of about 60 sections as they appeared uniquely for that day, which is a process I have to do for each subsequent performance, although I've been become a bit better with being prepared for what comes next. Uh, you can see that. Despite the ostensibly uncontrolled nature of the work, she was interested in controlling and shaping it, just as he would for his most carefully con composed works. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, as you can see, he wants, uh, he's suggesting having a little bit of a, a cheat sheet 
uh, next to me, uh, saying just dab and cat food and things like that in shorthand. So I just know what's about to come next. Um, otherwise, each page of the website is uh, can come as a bit of a shock if you're not used to it. Uh, in this, he's getting into making everything as a <clears throat> as fluent and fast as possible, getting things very simultaneous in terms of the finishing sections and starting the next section. So even you know he's very interested in things being tight, like his other composed works, <clears throat> and he's um, thinking about how to create structure out of the, this kind of random text that's online. Um, in particular here, like repeating particular words to create a sort of sense of climax towards the end. <coughs> so we also decided on many of the aspects that have become common to my versions, which are sort of basic uh, strategies. So the opening text is addressed to the audience without accompaniment. Most text boxes are accompanied by long sounds or drones. Nonsense text boxes are accompanied by shorter sound effects. Philosophical text is accompanied by an organ chorale. Actions are accompanied by a rotating propeller sound. And the feedback is always accompanied by a crescendo using a literal feedback sound with an organ cluster accompanying each um, entry in the feedback section. And the work finishes with two reaction videos. Um, and we always make sure those come at the end and I silently watch the first and then create a lot of sound during the second. So that's a kind of very sort of simple template which I've stuck to, um, even though there's been a lot of other, um, other variation which we'll talk about. So these seemingly prescriptive interpretive decisions still have many possible variations. And as we'll see, there are many aspects of the work that demanded more creative uh, interpretive choices. So after the premiere in Essendon, I performed it in different locations and contexts, from major festivals to small bars, uh, with more than 20 performances in the tour. And now, uh, obviously, the, uh, the going one will be tonight, um, with a few obvious other ones coming up. So there have been 24,000 edits to the score so far by 751 unique users. <clears throat> there might be a few more by tonight. Um, around from around 9,000 website visitors. Uh, contributions to the score have been extremely varied, but there are some notable themes and categories that we can observe. <coughs> so you get what Alex would call power users, but I kind of call it, you know, personal sort of adversity and tagging, like what street artists do. So people putting their own name into the notes, as you have here, putting their own website on there, or putting some kind of identifying mark on the website, like this particular composer who wrote unless at the beginning of all the text and kept on coming back to doing that and did that for basically a year. And, you know, and I found out recently who it was, it was an undergraduate composer in Australia, but he managed to then get his, get this unless as a theme into almost every uh, major performance for a year. Unless, 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 Dr. Orrid, unless. So that was at the beginning, that was the premiere, when he went really went nuts with the unless. <laughs> <laughs> but he had thought about it a lot, I'd talk because it. it has this kind of, I don't know, gives it a kind of, Samuel Beckett kind of feel, where everything starts with unless. Um, so then you have silly jokes and nonsense, which is what you'd expect on the internet. So smiley faces, all these things like uh, grown shopping trolley, do, there's uh, <laughs> things like lots of, you know, gibberish that you get. <coughs> um, fail to perform a magic trick in there. Uh, other kind of things which kind of, you know, sort of nonsense text and, and, and silliness and this whole section do nothing backwards. <laughs> <laughs> then also being the internet, you have lots of memes and in jokes. So you have this kind of Will Smith as the blue Aladdin kind of meme, which some students got quite enjoyed. Um, well, they also, I, well, they had put it on with a thread at a, a university performance. Uh, you're tearing me apart, Lisa, which is obviously from the Room, if you know that film, 
where, uh, or from the film that James Franco made about the room, um, which is, a, you know, meant to be the worst film of all time. Um, <laughs> this is, a, you know, at the Huddersfield performance, there are quite a lot of uh, Huddersfield uh, localised memes, which I find, always find really interesting when they're sort of localised in jokes, including a little poster of Alex on one of the uh, posters for um, Huddersfield Festival with this sort of text saying, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> and this sort of, uh, this particular video, which turned up in the Huddersfield performance, which again was a kind of very new music joke, which is a sort of Brian Fernie disco remix in, in which Brian <laughs> makes a <laughs> appearance, as you'll see. So as you can see, that was a Saturday Night Fever uh, crossing with Brian Fernieho in one of his string quartets. Um, there's political content which occasionally pops up. I just see people trying to make various points and various using various images, but uh, they only come up here and there, and it's very hard to make a very sort of coherent, you know, manifesto across the the website. Um, but so various symbols come up, and then this thing I, I guess I call it competitive painting, but it's really just people, you know, drawing and redrawing over each other. So it becomes quite its own type of section. Um, you get references to other composers quite a lot, and this is always very interesting. Over here we have, um, <clears throat> and I'll look at interpreting this a bit later, you have a bit of Morton Feldman down the bottom, some sketches, architectural sketches by Xenarchus, and at the top that's a image by uh, Christian Markley. And we'll look at some of these later as well, when people put up actual music, music videos. Uh, but they include this, which is a little pop song by The, the Knife, which is a 2000. <laughs> Some of these uh, tagging sections get turned into little battlegrounds for uh, where the uh, the notes get turned into text. And this particular section got turned into many things. Went from this, from Foges into uh, Fate, I think, then it became Bullet and then Date. So yeah, kept on going for a while. I don't think uh, this has survived anymore. Um, but the first one, uh, again, I did find out who it was who did who put that up. Uh, again, it's another under undergraduate music student <laughs> who he spent, uh, and we actually could clock his, um, you know, internet usage online. He didn't use it. We thought it might be a bot, but actually he'd gone on bit by bit and spent hours writing his name, <laughs> moving, you know, dragging and dropping those notes in. Uh, directed messages, which again, being the internet, and so you get all these things uh, about how I must sit at the piano, and then these things where it's sort of uh, messages sort of to me as, as if it's a, sort of some fangirl and then, you know, Alex under the shoe, but so, yeah, which is all can be a bit embarrassing, but yeah, but also very interesting because often, you know, people are sending messages to me and sometimes people send messages to each other in the performance. It says send little in-jokes or hellos to each other and shout outs. Uh, this is a little, uh, well, there's a section of you, images which includes a few uh, references where they've sort of gone to my website and pulled up a few. Listen, unless.
yes, we've already my website. And then you have more sophisticated sort of, uh, particularly in the reaction videos where people have responded and they're communicating with both Alex and myself in more complex ways. This is, again, we don't know who made this, but it, we know his IP address is somewhere in Germany. for tonight so you get other kind that's uh you get well i guess it's kind of meta content but you get other kind of meta content where you take selfies uh there's this sort of thing which again you'll see uh, a version of this tonight where people take the same section and take videos from previous performances and put them online feedback loop go <laughs> So I won't play too much of that because you hear a version of this giant. But that's me in Huddersfield playing with me in Darmstadt, playing with me in Esslingen in the small screen there. <laughs> in the same section, and as you can see there, the te you know, the notes are similar, but they've been sort of, you know, gradually changed. So the notes are different. But overall, that originally was someone putting on what I think is the EastEnders theme. Um, then there's explicit content. We've actually not... Uh, we tried not to censor the website in the end as much as possible. Uh, the only thing we argued over with was this, which uh, came up for a festival, which was a live uh, nude cam, which I didn't want on there, but Alex insisted that would be uh, interesting, which I definitely thought would be less interesting. But, so he won in that case. But there was no one on the cam at the time of the performance, so that was good. Uh, <laughs> And then, you know, other, other kinds of things like that. You have trolling, again, being an internet-based piece. This is sort of <coughs> expected. In this case, someone wiped the entire website and replaced everything with this entire Simpsons meme about steamed hams, which is his uh, criticism of the piece. And again, uh, over time, I found out who all these people were. This is now quite a, well, he's quite a well-known composer, actually. He did that. Uh, <laughs> Well, well, no, yeah, very successful younger composer. And then you have uh, collaborative creation. So this is, it was posted on the sort of uh, Facebook group. And then there was a whole discussion about, you know, what they got me to do in previous performances and what they weren't going to put on there. Um, and there's this uh, Skype <coughs> group as well, which got in touch with Alex. Um, and I believe that might be the guy who made the videos. <coughs> now, last little section i'm going to look at uh, some of the more complex strategies that i've devised for dealing with this uh this huge range of content so many of the elements we've worked out in the first workshop have been redeployed in further performances although the more varied materials have demanded that the approaches become much more flexible and widely applicable and there have been many further strategies that i've developed independently we can examine some of these more difficult solutions in more detail. So at the most simple level, uh, I curate the length of video and sound sections uh, based on how interesting they are. So if they're not so interesting, I actually truncate them and move on, which allows me to control the structure of the work and the length. Uh, so the series of actions, I always try to have variety between verbalizations and silent actions. Again, just to create a bit of Variety of interest. Oh, 
unless, 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 unless. <laughs> but always having that variety allows you to have, um, you know, it, it allows that section to be interesting. Otherwise, it's just can be a, quite boring just doing a, a whole lot of just silent actions, maybe. Uh, when it comes to images, uh, these are played as a fast sequence of graphic notation with an attempt to play any written notation, as you could see there previously where there was a bit of Chirino. Uh, so we saw bits of uh, this one a bit earlier. Uh, so this contains quite a few, it contains literal playing of scores, more abstract in, in interpretation of graphics as graphic scores, and then humor, humorous, reference, humorous references to other music. Uh, in this case, using the uh, Darth Vader's thing. And there was a bit of yeah, reflections in the water there with the Green Reaper. Um, <clears throat> so, but actually there's quite a different, quite a few different forms of interpretation of images there, all happening uh, in fast succession, which I think also keeps it interesting rather than just having, um, you know, having a very um, one particular approach to, to the graphic notation. So videos can also be treated like graphic scores. So at the most simplest form, you have this kind of Mickey mousing, we have literal cartoons. <laughs> then you have uh, <clears throat> sort of more interesting mappings of screen to sound. Oh, let me go back to that. multi-layered responses to the screen, including this one from 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, which acts as a, so the, my interpretation of it, acts as a corollary of the saturated screen visuals, as a quasi-arrangement of Ligeti's atmospheres, uh, which is used in the original soundtrack, and, and hopefully also just uh, fits into the structure of, of what was happening in that performance. <laughs> Challenging bits are when the people put actual music on, where I need to actually, in quite fast time, work out an arrangement for it and then play along. Stranger Things theme, uh, and uh, this is, uh, there's people love their 80s music videos as well. I won't play it because, again, it's appeared on tonight's version. But let's just say it's a bit of Burt Bacharach that turns up, for those of you who know that old Austin Powers film. <clears throat> uh, and then the final sort of uh, 
even a, a, you know kind of tricky thing to do with with video is then to comment on it um and so humor through irony juxtaposition of sound and image and references to other works are utilized wherever i can um and audience laughter is often a major goal for the uh, for each version that i create um which is unusual for a work i guess uh in this case, a clip from the early 2000s UK satire, Brass Eye, some of you might remember it, was put on the website. And given the video's national emergency message, I chose Land of Hope and Glory as an accompaniment, which is a rather unsubtle combination, but seemed to work, given it was a very quick little video. No one is safe. By the end of tomorrow, one or all of these people may have been set on fire, bum raped, or burgled senseless by Britain's marauding criminals. This month, police pictures showed another estate in Manchester turning itself into a gun. Statistics. <laughs> it's a, it was a great show. Um, <clears throat> so as a result of these and early strategies, uh, the work may have maintained a type of coherence despite the huge range of content being interpreted. And what has fascinated me further is the statements of some composers in Darmstadt that despite the radical approach, the result is a typical Alexander Schubert work. Schubert does stamp his authority over some decisions in these subsequent performances. We often have rigorous discussion in the lead-up to performances about which version is best, uh, with the argument often centering around the sort of humour and also which versions is uh, structurally satisfying, um, and particularly because a lot of this kind of British humour uh, added by UK participants doesn't really chime with his German sensibilities. Uh, but uh, I, in the end, mostly I get the final say. So there are several future possibilities for further developing the concept of the project. Live editing the score by the audience in performances one, uh, with a number of difficulties in terms of programming as well as the four for me. Uh, Schubert has created other community pieces that he feels are part of the same group of pieces, including ones where each performer takes uh, the previous work and makes a new version of, of it, creating this expanding tree of versions. But this to me sound seems like quite a categorically different approach. There are also major questions about the future of Wikipiano. How will it survive over several years? What happens years down the track when Schubert is not maintaining the website? Can the work survive without the involvement of myself and Schubert decades later? Already I'm engaging with the work in the lead up to performances in quite a different way, with less online uh, engagement ongoing uh, online engagement and more possibly for single users to make changes across the work and to take command of the work, I've become a more active curator, reverting some changes that will be less successful and inserting material to balance out what's already there and weaving references to the images and videos into the text to create more formal coherence. These are all compositional decisions that I would rather leave to online users, which is the original and more philosophically pure approach that this type of intervention can often make a huge difference to a particular uh, versions performance success. Uh, there's obviously a great deal more to say about Wikipiano, but I hope in the time today you've seen how big the project is, not just a single piece, but an ongoing set of related works created before each performance. And far from being the Cajun experiment that Schubert originally imagined, it has turned into a musical mirror of online creativity with all its subcultures, fast evolving trends and destructive tendencies. What's hopefully clear from the examples is how successful our collaboratively developed strategies are in maintaining the coherence of the work, despite attempts by some users to force me into uncomfortable performance situations or steer the work in extreme directions. What's also clear is that this is indeed a prime example, exemplar of music in the expanded field or the new discipline, <coughs> whichever name you prefer. Uh, every version combines music, theater, and stage action, speaking, comedy, and post-internet aesthetics in many different ways and with a lot of discipline required. However, it can be seen as a parody of, or subversion of this genre, undercutting the discipline of the composition of the genre in terms of uh, the compositional discipline by demonstrating how these elements work in almost any combination uh, without the need for craftsmanship in some ways. But in my opinion, the craft is there despite the furious activity on the website not just in my curation of the website score, but in the range of strategies that we uh, collaboratively devised. With our shared taste and understanding of the work maintain the key adherence across many performances. Although the types of performative decisions are common to the arsenals of many modern performers, 
must require that the work goes beyond this repertoire of performance practice to forming and protecting a shared aesthetic vision of the work, where I increasingly assume the role of composer-curator as Schubert is less involved with its ongoing performances. The work might be a challenge to the traditional idea of solo authorship, but it is more interesting to see it as a rich network of authorial control, with myself ending up at the end of the line as both the victim of this online maelstrom of creativity as well as its master. Thank you. Now, I seem to have used it almost pretty much all the time, so it depends. I don't know if we have time for questions, hopefully. Yeah, I think. Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes. Um, just as a matter of interest, how how many users are editing this are kind of musician, composer, nerds, and how many are kind of involved with more internet subculture? I mean, has it has it kind of expanded into like the more subversive parts of the internet, or is it mostly kind of composers with a lot of time in their hands? Uh, so we did a, a few sort of surveys. Most of them are sort of young composers. Uh, so, sort of, you know, teenage and, and undergraduate music students um, who are also involved in sort of internet subculture and, you know, interested in having like music meme pages and things like that. Um, as you can see that Facebook group there where a lot of them were active users. So there's people who are at that crossover. There are some, you know, people who are non-musicians who are get onto it and <coughs> find they can engage with it because they can, you know, they can put text on, they don't have to be musically literate to engage but which is kind of what we wanted we want you know wide range and so there has been a certain subsection that's got involved and certain older people and you can kind of tell when older people get online it's a different type of content um but generally it's being younger people and generally people who uh have some involvement as being music students or musicians yeah um it feels like it's, it's obviously quite an episodic fragmented piece in a way is there how do you deal with transitions between the modules or the, or the pages or the sections is there any particular strategy for kind of unifying throughout or? um there's no particular strategy in that the the way of moving between sections is kind of standard in that i move quite quickly i have a pedal to step through the website so it happens quite immediately and each new section has a new sound and a new Sort of sonic environment around it um, and it's new types of content and because the time you know there's only certain types of content that appear in the in the piece you know notation text sections so these sort of things come back so I think through that you get a kind of coherence yeah. through yeah. and because then you expect you know once you see one uh, YouTube video you know that it's not such a surprise when you see a couple of others so you're expecting that to form them to form like pillars of the piece. Um, but yeah, it is episodic, but it's about working out how to play episodic music the same way as you would if you were playing um, Nation, which is also episodic, and you just have to make it to cohere in a, in a sort of linear sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is there a maximum amount of actions that the piece can contain, or could it theoretically contain? An infinite number of actions. No, there's a maximum. There's a there's a certain set number of of modules. There's I think sixty in there. Um, so that you can't add modules to it. You can only edit the ones that are there um, and completely change the content of what's there or turn them on and off so you can reduce the number. But yeah, you can't uh, infinitely. Of course, you could put on you know a video or a sound file that lasts for twenty four hours or something. But then. And some people have done that, but then, you know, it's really, then becomes my choice of when I'm going to, uh, how long I'm going to play that for. But there are ways, yeah, that way, if theoretically you could make it last for a very long time. Yes. Just curious, how, how do you actually prepare for the for, for the performance? How much time, you see you've got 24 hours before you, I mean, it must be quite something to, Yes, yeah, so how do you do it? You know? Originally, I kind of wanted you know a week because you know for any kind of big you know high pressure performance, you kind of want to be prepared. But as we 
gone through it, you know, with you know the sort of philosophic <coughs> philosophy of the pieces that you try and make get it as close as possible to the performance. Um, so I try and look through and memorize roughly what is going to be there. But the things that need a lot of creative input, I make decisions then about what I'm going to do. If it's a bit of you know music that I need to play with, then I need to find find or make an arrangement of that uh, and work <coughs> that out and work out you know what key the video might be in um, and yeah. and work that out yeah so very quickly. Uh, yeah, so the, that's the most challenging thing I think. Um, but then a lot of the rest is sort of just being able to be spontaneous and you know making very quick decisions about exactly what's going to go where. Um, and then also like going back and relying on some of these strategies that I've used in the past. So it's become much easier to have gone on because a lot of the content ends up being quite similar in some ways. You know, nonsense content is, is you know, you have to read out something different, but you can perform it and accompany it in a certain way, yeah. in a similar way. Thank you very much.